Hey guys, so if you didn't watch part one, go ahead and watch it because part one is all about the foundation of magnesium. Now we're on part two. Okay, so um, one thing you need to know about magnesium, magnesium is involved in relaxation. Calcium is involved in contraction, but it's also involved in cellular signaling and cellular reproduction. So the function of calcium goes way beyond just making bone. It's involved in a lot of different things. But as far as the interaction in minerals, uh, when you have low magnesium, you're going to have high calcium. They kind of work opposing each other. So if you're high in calcium, you're going to cause a magnesium deficiency. Okay, So they kind of teeter-totter. Now, when you're low in magnesium, you'll actually be low in potassium because they, they work very closely together. They don't oppose each other. They work e with each other. And if you're low with potassium, you have low magnesium. So how does this relate? So let's say, for example, you're taking a supplement, a straight, pure potassium supplement without magnesium. You'll end up finding that it won't really work without magnesium because you need this with this. And this is why when you eat food, you always have these minerals together, not isolated. Or when you take an electrolyte powder, you normally see all the electrolytes together when you take them. They're more functional that way. Let's say you have insulin resistance, which most of the population has. You'll end up with a magnesium deficiency. You'll have excess calcium and you'll have low potassium. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about calcium. Now we have the inside of the cell and we have the outside of the cell. As far as this electrolyte calcium, you have 10,000 times more concentrated calcium on the outside of the cell than you do on the inside of the cell. Now, potassium is much different because you have 98% of the potassium inside the cell and only 2% outside the cell. But calcium is different. In order for calcium to be transported, you have this thing called a voltage-gated calcium channel. This is basically just a gate or a door to allow calcium to go in and out, and also it controls other things as well. You need calcium to even produce insulin from the pancreas, so it's involved in a lot of different functions, including signaling uh, certain things. Now, if you have too much calcium inside the cell and these, this ratio is not correct, you develop a condition called intracellular hypercalcinosis, which is a fancy term for you have too much calcium inside the cell. This is very, very dangerous, and it's very common for a lot of people. In fact, a drug that a lot of doctors use for high blood pressure is called a calcium channel blocker. So calcium channel blockers basically prevent the calcium from building up inside the cell, and you can lower blood pressure from that, okay? Because the excess calcium makes the arteries stiffer, and it raises um, blood pressure because it's no longer elastic and you get too much contraction, okay? And not enough relaxation. So they use a calcium channel blocker. They're blocking in this channel right here to reduce blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers are also used in another condition called Raynaud's. And that's a condition where uh, the circulation at the end of your fingertips uh, is really bad and poor where you get this like almost purple because the smooth muscle is uh, restricting blood flow to the end of the fingertips, especially if you're going outside in the cold or you touch something really cold. So calcium channel blockers improve that simply because they inhibit contraction and increase blood flow. And then we have bronchiospasm or asthma. Why would the calcium channel blocker improve a spasm in your lungs? Well, simply because it inhibits contraction in the smooth muscle in your lungs, okay? And you can breathe better. So if you have too much calcium that builds up inside the cell, you can have all sorts of issues. High blood pressure, you can develop anxiety, bipolar, migraines, myofascial trigger points. That would be uh, trigger points. Let's say you have certain knots around the body, like someone presses on them and it's very painful. Inflammation, cancer, because of the cell signaling problem, diabetes, We've talked a little bit about insulin resistance, neurodegeneration, uh, degenerative joint disease. There are just so many problems that can occur if you have an imbalance of calcium with too much calcium inside the cell. And when you go to the doctor and get your calcium tested, um, they don't actually check the calcium inside the cell. They may just focus on the calcium outside the cell. But to do that, you have to do an intracellular calcium test. Okay, guys, now in the last video, part three, 
I'm going to talk about what to do to get this calcium out of the cell and reverse this process. Stay tuned. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?